Once the ancient capital of Lao, Luang Prabang retained some of the charm of a long-gone kingdom that ruled the mountainous region along the Mekong River. Today it is the cultural and spiritual capital of Lao, with a high concentration of Buddhist temples and streets full of saffron-clad monks. A century of French influence gives the old town a colonial charm, with colorful window shutters and flower-lined streets buzzing with scooters. It was one of my favorite Asian small towns, and here's how it went. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to Luang Pavang. This is the ancient capital city of Lao, and it's my third stop here. And this is just one of the most beautiful, quaint, little small towns in Asia that I've ever been to. It just has these beautiful flower-lined streets with this old French colonial architecture, tons of cute cafes, you have these rolling hills off in the distance, you're right on the Mekong River, so you have boats just going up and down the river here. And it's also the spiritual and cultural capital of Laos. You have a very high concentration of old historic temples. There's about 35 in the historic old towns. And then all throughout town, you'll have these monks just wandering the streets in their saffron colored robes. So you really just get a unique glimpse into the spiritual life of Buddhism here. And right now, I'm on the northern part of this little peninsula between the two rivers here. There's a nice little beach, cool place to come for sunset, to watch boats going up and down the river, some of the hills off in the distance. And just up the hill from here is the Xiong Thong Temple, which is one of the most famous temples here and has these beautiful glass mosaics. So let's head up the hill and we'll start exploring the old town of Luang Pavang. I've just made it to my first temple here in Luang Pabang, and it's the Vat Sheng Thong, which is one of the oldest and most historically significant temples in all of Laos. It was built in the 1500s, and its name means the Temple of the Golden City. And it cost about 20,000 kip or one US dollar to enter here. And we just have this big open courtyard. It looks like there's gonna be a couple little temples that we can explore. And then on the edges here, we have some monasteries for the monks. So let's wander around and check out some of the really cool old historic religious architecture here. Right when you enter to the right, there's this smaller little temple in the corner here that has this massive golden facade to it. And you go inside and you're greeted by five dragon heads. And then in the back of the room and all around the walls, you have this amazing deep red and these glass mosaics with just all these really cool colors. And that's not even the main temple. So let's head to the center of the complex here and check out the main temple. That was a quick glimpse to the inside of the Xiang Thong Temple, the main temple in the complex here. And you enter through this golden gate, and then all the way at the back, you just have this massive golden Buddha sitting peacefully. And then all along the walls, you just have this dark black and red paint with these golden geometric symbols and stories of Buddha. So very beautiful, very elegant interior there. So in this courtyard, there's a lot more to see and do. So let's just kind of wander around the edge of the courtyard here, check out a couple of these other side temples. We have some like beautiful flowers in this courtyard, some pagodas. So yeah, let's just walk around and check it out. I've been 
wandering around the temple complex a little bit here and there's not too many more things you can go into but one of the really cool parts about the Xiang Thong temple complex here is these really colorful glass mosaics on the outside and you just have this orange coral color and then these bright blue and gold glass pieces that are just shimmering in the light here so really cool to come around and check out the outsides of some of the temples here. That was Wat Sheng Thong, which again is one of the most historical temples here in Luang Pabang and just very beautiful exteriors. I mean, it was cool to go inside and see the golden paintings, but then the outside, all of those colorful glass mosaics, just very cool to just walk around and study this really old artwork that's like almost 500 years old. Very beautiful. So. Anyways, we are at the northernmost part of the old town of Luampabang, and you come out to Sakhalin Road, which is the main stretch that'll take us to the center of town where there's the royal palace and the national temple. But all along Sakhalin here, there's a whole bunch of temples in the old town. As I mentioned earlier, there's about 35 temples within the old town. So as we're walking down, I'm just gonna hop in and out a few of the temples here, and then eventually the Sakhalin Road turns into this beautiful French colonial architecture. You have all of these flowers and cafes, so we'll go through that part, and then eventually we'll make it to the Royal Palace. But yeah, let's just do a little bit of temple hopping on the main road through Luang Prabang now. I've just been walking down Sakhalin Road, which is the main road going through the old town here, and there's a handful of these temples that you can kind of just stick your head in and out of. I'm not even gonna bother naming all of them, but if you just walk down the road, you'll just see them one after the other. And again, a lot of them are active monasteries, so you'll see a couple of the monks some doing some chores and doing some of their studies outside some of these monasteries. And then there's just so much detail on so many of these temples. You just have this golden paint on these red, and black walls and it's just really really beautiful so if you want to do some temple hopping you can just go in and out of all these temples here so we're gonna keep going down Sakhalin Road and we're gonna be entering the old French Quarter here the rest of the way to the Royal Palace which is another quarter mile or so and again we're gonna have these flower covered streets a lot of scooters going up and down the road we'll have street side cafes a lot of tourist shops and it'll be a cool place to just walk through so let's do a little walking tour through the old French Quarter there. just made it to the heart of the old town of Luang Prabang and Lao was a French protectorate from about 1890s to the mid 1900s so in the heart of Luang Prabang we have this really cool mix of French colonial architecture you have these really nice like shuttered buildings cute French cafes creperies and then you have the contrast of these historic Lao temples and you can just hop in these little cafes all day. There's cute little bars. You just have these amazing flowers 
and trees overflowing into the street. You just have this never-ending row of scooters and tuk-tuks just going up and down the road here. And it's just a very quaint place to walk around. You have a bunch of back side streets. You have these brick sidewalks. So yeah, let's just walk around and enjoy this little downtown part of the old town of Luang Prabang. And then we'll head to the Royal Palace, which is just a couple blocks from here. just a little bit of the old quarter and again it's just where I completely fell in love with Luang Prabang and especially Lao. It's just so quaint, such beautiful old architecture, amazing flowers. Anyways we've just come down that road and right at the base of Fusi Hill here and right in front of Fusi Hill we have the Royal Palace and Museum. So I know it has weird hours but let's just head into the complex and show you guys a little bit of the outside of one of the national temples and the old royal palace here in the center of Old Town Luang Prabang. So unfortunately the Royal Museum was just closing at about 4 when I got there so I wasn't able to get too much footage in there but basically this is the old royal palace. It was built in the early 1900s by the French for the king of Lao. But when the royal family was overthrown in 1975, they converted the palace into a national museum. So it's just a national museum with a, a lot of old artifacts from Lao from all over the country here. And I know you couldn't take any photos or videos in there anyways, so I wouldn't have been able to show you the inside. But if you wanted to learn about some Lao history, you'd be able to go in there and check out this cool old royal palace that has a mix of French and Lao architecture. So anyways, right in front of the royal palace, we have the Fusi Hill, which is one of the best places for sunset here in Luang Prabang. So I'm gonna head up the 300 steps here to the top. There's a temple and we'll get 360 degree views of the city and the river for sunset. So let's head up there. We have about an hour till sunset. So we'll just relax up there and take in some of the views. just made it to the top of the Fo Si mountain here and right on the peak we have this golden temple mount here and then it's kind of right in the middle and then you're still surrounded by trees so it's not quite 360 degree views but we have this beautiful view overlooking the river and just all of these mountains that are surrounding us and you can look down onto the villages beneath us and it's gonna be a beautiful place for sunset we still have about 30 minutes 45 minutes and this place is actually quite packed for sunset so we might be fighting for shots and for angles but it's gonna be some beautiful views of the light over the Mekong River the sunset from Fo Si Hill and honestly it's completely miserable there's so many people and you're all fighting for the same shot but you are elevated up here so you're getting this nice view over all of these rows of the hills of the mountains and you get this nice pink sun over the Mekong River but just so many people and there's not a lot of room to sit so you're all just standing up here and fighting people for photos and selfie sticks and everything and there's 
So there's tons of other like really cool places to watch the sunset down in town on the Mekong River. But I mean, you do get a good view from up here. So anyways, let's head down Fosse Hill and we're gonna check out the night market on that main street there. I've just come down from the Fusi Hill and I'm right on the Sakhalin Road, which is that main road that goes through town that we were exploring earlier. And at night, this just turns into one of the coolest night markets that I've been to, at least in Laos. You just have this really long row, probably at least a quarter mile of crafts. And they're actually like really quality crafts. You'll get some really nice textiles, carvings, paintings, these nice bowls. So it's a really good place to buy souvenirs. A lot of the other markets I've been to have just been mass produced souvenirs, but here you get some really cool handmade stuff. And then at the end of the road, you'll have this big open food court area. And then there's some other side streets that are more food oriented streets where you can get some really cool street food and they have tables to sit and everything. So yeah, definitely one of the coolest things to do at night here in Luang Prabang. So I'm gonna just take you guys on a quick walking tour, show you some of like the craft stalls and some of the food stands that you can check out here at the night markets. So yeah, let's head down and check it out. So that's about it for the night market here, but really one of the most extensive night markets, especially here in Laos. It's just quite long having all of those crafts on the main street there and then coming out to the edge, there was that food court area, so many good foods. And then there's a couple of these little narrow back streets that are a little bit more quiet, a little bit more local, and just really cool to see and experience. Anyways, that's it for the first day in Luang Prabang. Tomorrow morning, we have to get up really early because in the mornings at 6.30, they have all of the monks line the streets and they get their offerings from a lot of the businesses. So you can participate in that and just witness a lot of these monks walking through the streets in the early morning. So so I'll see you guys nice and early tomorrow morning to show you guys that ritual here. Good morning guys, it's my second day here in Luang Pabong and it's 6.15 in the morning and I got up before the sunrise this morning to show you guys a really unique cultural experience here in Luang Pabong. Every morning, all of the monks from all of the temples here, they line the streets with their bowls and it's called Tak Bat. And a lot of the business owners and residents of the town will line the streets here and they'll hand out sticky rice and different food items to the monks here. And it's a part of monastic living is to not beg, but to freely receive these gifts and offerings from the people. I know the streets are going to be lined with tourists as well, but it is a unique thing to see in the morning, seeing these lines of silent monks in their orange saffron robes lined up with their bowls ready to accept the offerings of the morning. So I'm going to head up to Sakhalin Road, which is that main road through the old town here, and witness this cultural, spiritual experience this morning. So that was the Tak Bat and very cool 
to experience. I love seeing cultural events like that. And again, just this row of monks in their orange robes just going up and down these old colonial streets was really something to see. But there's a lot of criticism that tourism is ruining this spiritual cultural practice. And I will say it was just lined with tourists. Like there were so many people. It was far from the serene, quiet, spiritual experience that it's supposed to be. And anyways, there's a morning market in the old town here. So I'm gonna head over and check that out. But first I'm gonna get a coffee on one of the old streets here in the old town. And then we'll head over and check out the morning market and continue exploring the Long Now we're gonna head over to the morning market and I think it's kind of tucked away in some of the back streets near where the night market was last night. And I've heard it's a little bit more of a local experience, lots of fruits and vegetables and a bit of like a meat market. So yeah, let's head over, check out the morning market and see a little bit of the local morning culture here in Luang Prabang. So that was just a quick glimpse at the morning market here and just very cool, so colorful. There's so many colorful vegetables and it just has a very local feel. I mean, there's a few touristy shops, but it's mostly people going for their grocery shopping. And then there's a few little restaurants and cafes. So I even got a little noodle soup there and you're just sitting right amongst the bustling market. And yeah, just had a very local, authentic experience. And it just shows that here in Luang Pabang, you should definitely get up early. There's just such a cool energy in the morning doing the takbat and then the morning market and it's only like 8 a.m. and I feel like I've experienced so much of the culture here already. So we're kind of right in the old town here and I'm gonna try to find a shared tuk-tuk or bus out to Kuang Si waterfalls which is one of the most beautiful waterfalls I've heard here in Southeast Asia. So I wanna go check it out. So let's uh, see if we can figure out a way to get there. So I just went to the center of town, kind of on the main street, and there's a bunch of taxis that have Kuangxi Falls on them, but it sounds like if I wanna do a shared taxi, I have to wait until about 10, 10.30, or else I'd have to do a private, which is really expensive. So. I'm gonna go back to my hostel, chill for a little bit, maybe get another coffee, and I'll see you guys in a couple hours when we get a shared taxi to the waterfall. It's about 10.30 now, so we're just hanging out at the hostel. We have this beautiful view right along the river, got some coffee. But I'm gonna head back to the center of town here and see if I can get a shared tuk-tuk to the Kuang Si Falls.
And so it was actually a little bit complicated to get here. It was about seven or eight dollars and about a half hour, 45 minute tuk-tuk ride to get here. Then we just paid about a dollar fifty to get an electric shuttle up to the entrance to Kwong Sea Falls. And now we have about a quarter mile walk to the waterfall. just walked through this beautiful forest. There was like a little bear exhibit where they have some protected bears that are indigenous to this region. And then you walk through the forest and then you just see this beautiful cerulean blue pool. And then you have these series of waterfalls and there's a bunch of different bridges and paths that you can take through this lush forest. And it's just amazing how blue this water is. So let's just kind of wander around, enjoy some of this beautiful blue water, enjoy the sound of the trickling waterfalls, and then just this luscious green forest that surrounds us. been just a beautiful stroll through this magical forest here and the water is just so blue we've had all of these small little like tiered cascades and then finally you get to this boardwalk and then there's this bridge right in front of the large waterfall and even the large waterfall just has all of these different layers to it and the water is just splashing down it and it's just really really stunning so much texture surrounded by greenery so let's head up to that main bridge and get a close-up view of the largest waterfall here at Kong Sea. So on my travels, I don't often go out of my way for waterfalls, but this is an exception because this is just really one of the most beautiful waterfalls. I just love all of the depth and texture. And even as the waterfall is falling here, it just has all of these like rounded little shelves that the water's hitting. So there's so many different layers that the water's falling down. And then it cascades into these little pools down here with just this bright blue water surrounded by this luscious jungle and you have all of these beautiful plants, all of these really nice boardwalks and just really amazing waterfall to visit here. So from here, I think you can hike up around the side of this major waterfall and get different viewpoints of this 60 meter cascade. So let's walk around and see what other angles we can get of this major waterfall. Okay, never mind. It looks like the path up above the waterfall is under construction right now. So we won't be able to get those other views, but there's still a lot of different paths we can walk around. And we still have like an hour and a half until the tuk-tuk back to town. So I'm just going to sit and enjoy just sitting by these waterfalls and enjoy some of the nature here. So yeah, let's enjoy these beautiful views and then eventually we'll get the tuk-tuk back to town. That was Kwang Si Waterfall. Really one of the most beautiful waterfalls I've been to. I just loved the 
bright blue color of all of those little pools, great little swimming spots, and just so much texture and layers to the waterfall. So anyways, we're gonna jump back in our tuk-tuk here and as we were driving through here, we were going through the beautiful countryside of Laos and there are a bunch of little cute cafes in these like beautiful rice fields surrounded by the mountains. So we're gonna jump back in the tuk-tuk and see if we can stop at one of these little cafe, coffee shops and just have a refreshing drink with some beautiful views in the Lao countryside. So we've just driven halfway back to Luang Prabang through this beautiful countryside of Laos and we've stopped at this Samna Cafe and there's just all of these little bungalows out on these rice fields here. So we're just going to get a coffee, get a drink, chill with just these beautiful views looking over these bright green fields. So that was Samna Cafe here, just beautiful little bungalows right on these rice terraces. You're looking over the mountains, beautiful bright green. So anyways, we're going to jump back in the tuk-tuk. We probably have about a 15, 20 minute ride back to Luang Prabang. So let's head back to the city. just made it back to Luang Pabang and it's just about sunset so that afternoon excursion to the waterfalls basically took all afternoon it's quite a distance to get there it's about 35 40 minutes and then we hung out there for a couple hours and then on the way back we stopped at that beautiful rice terrace cafe very cool experience so cool to get out into nature and just a little bit more of the countryside of Lao here and so now we're back in town the sun is setting so i think that's about it for the luang habong video but what just like a beautiful charming town just so quaint so cute there's so many amazing little cafes so many amazing little streets to explore with these colonial buildings mixed with these old lao temple architecture just a very cool place this is definitely a place i want to come back and hang out in a little bit longer. There's a couple more things I wish I could have done. I wanted to cross the Mekong River here and head to the other side and there's a little village you can check out, some temples, you can do a couple hikes up some of the hills over there. But tomorrow I'm heading off to Nang Kiao, which is another small village about three or four hours by bus to get there. So I'll be checking that out. There'll be some really cool hikes and it'll be cool to get into an even more remote village. But I'll probably come back to Luang Pabang after that and just chill here for a couple more days because it really deserves some time just to take it slow, take it easy, and just enjoy some of the laid back culture and vibes here. And that was one of the cool things is this was just such a cultural place, seeing all of the spiritual practices, the temples, and yeah, cool to be here in the ancient capital of Laos. So anyways, guys, that's it for my time here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed experiencing this really quaint city with me, and I'll see you guys in Nong Kiao.